Hi folks, well it's Sunday the 2nd of August today and it's time for another look around the greenhouse and as you can see I'm on holiday right now. On coming back from my holiday I noticed this and this leaf seems to be covered in little green aphids sucking away on it it's even got a spider down in the corner that's uh, I presume living off the aphids there so I'm going to get that under the microscope and try and experiment on it so in my ongoing battle against pest control um, people suggested I tried diatomaceous earth, so I got myself a couple of kilos of it. And this is a very fine silica, I believe it's based upon. And it's called diatomaceous because it's made of the remains of diatoms, which are some single-celled organism. And it has a very, very fine particle size. So I thought we'd try putting some of that under the microscope, and then get the aphids under there, and then see what it does to the aphids. So you can see the green in the plastic in these lines going vertically up the screen. That's just the grain from the moulding in the plastic. And uh, that's the end of my tweezers there, badly out of focus. But it's a very, very fine powder. Um, my understanding is that this works because it's a desiccant. It dries things out, it sucks the moisture out. And in um, aphids and other soft-bodied in, soft insects like that, um, having all the moisture sucked out of them works out very, very badly for the aphids. So, let's find out how badly it does work out. I'll go and get that leaf. I'm going to just sprinkle a bit of diatomaceous earth on this, and uh, I'll leave the microscope running for a while, and we'll see what kind of effect this has. Leave that running for a few hours and see what happens. Okay, so what you're watching here is a total of nine hours of footage that I shot under the microscope, and the majority of this is played back at a hundred times speed. But I do slow it down in places when there's something I noticed that looked particularly noteworthy. And I had all sorts of problems recording this because as the leaf was drying out under the microscope it kept going out of focus so I had to continually adjust it, well not continually, every 20 minutes, half an hour I came in and fiddled about with it and adjusted it and got things back in focus again. If you watch closely here, you're going to see an aphid poop. And, uh, it wiggles its leg a couple of times and then here we go. And that's the soft, sweet, sticky resin that ants like to collect and feed upon and bring back to the nest as a vital food source. Um, now what diatomaceous earth is, is it's the remains of this micro single cellular little um, algae style plant called a diatom. And these have been around for since the age of the dinosaurs. They live in the sea and they build their bodies out of silica, out of sand basically, but um, just out of silica, the raw material. And they build, because they're single cellular, they build a very, very fine shell. And after these have died, this shell sinks down to the seabed and you get the seabed covered in lots and lots of the remains of diatoms, which is where diatomaceous earth comes from. So if you have a look to the top left up here, you'll see an aphid oozing out of its skin and 
it does this as its body grows and it sheds its outer exoskeleton it, it enables it to grow bigger so all the little white fluffy bits that you see they're kicking around a piece there are actually the shed skins of the aphid and these little they, they look white they're basically transparent but they look white and they're often mistaken for being white fly but of course they don't move because they're just the remains of the aphids outer layer Once this diatomaceous earth is dried out, then it contains a huge amount of silica and uh, it acts a bit like silica gel does and absorbs moisture. Um, the other possibility of one of the ways it's working is because it's made of such small fine particles, um, they're very sharp and they get into the skin and joints on the aphids and other soft skinned insects and um, them up the works that way. slowed this down because these two aphids in the middle coordinate to do this amazing kick on the uh, shed skin from the other aphid and I don't know where it went I slowed that down to half speed there and I think it's over in the left hand side now but uh, it's really hard to work out where that went they kicked it at quite some speed We're just having a little look around the leaf to see if there's anything interesting going on here. Um, as I say, I had to keep refocusing the camera every 20 minutes or so, and I got bored of looking at the same insect when nothing had happened for an hour. So I was just having a little look around the leaf to see if there was anything exciting going on. About five hours in, just over five hours, I decided to try dusting the leaf a bit more finely. So this is why the aphids now look slightly more covered with silica, um, or with diatomaceous earth. I was just trying my new duster out, which I'll show you later on. Um, I was also trying to kind of speed up any kind of result because things were going rather slowly with no obvious effect, no obvious detriment going onto the aphids. They're covered in white powder, but uh, it doesn't seem to be affecting their skin at all. Um, but, but there are a couple of them that shed their skin though, but um, I think that's just as a normal. There goes one now, beautiful, in the top left hand corner there. Um, but I think this is just a normal part of them growing because they don't seem to be stopping their feeding at all or doing anything different. They're all quite happily stood there with their uh, spikes stuck in the leaf so they can drain all the sap out of it. About seven hours into the recording I noticed this guy with a patch on the side and I got all excited because I thought possibly his skin had ruptured and he was leaking out his fluids but I think what's actually happened with this one is he's just pooped on himself and uh, that's his waste product there sitting on top of his skin. I left the camera on it for a good hour or so but there's no sign that he's uh, suffering at all and he's still feeding away happily and nothing's going on, he's not shrinking or getting all drained out or dried out or anything.
This little guy doesn't seem to be enjoying himself very much though. Um, I think possibly diatomaceous earth is having more of an effect on the very, very young. Um, he's certainly struggling in a big way there and he's uh, having trouble with his locomotion. So it is possible that the fine particles of silica are getting into the joints and the gaps in the exoskeleton on the aphid and uh, gumming up the works that way and affecting the young rather than affecting the adults that are already feeding. Um, I'm guessing that's how it works on aphids because that little guy really isn't happy there. Anyway, enough of that. If anyone's still watching at this point, let's have a look at the rest of the plants in the greenhouses. So let's have a quick look at greenhouse number two. This golden berry, which has been suffering for ever such a long time, um, actually seems to be putting out some new growth now. And this is after spraying it with a mixture of neem oil and detergent. But um, I've got some little tiny baby leaves coming through that have not been eaten by the spider mites. So I think I might be winning that battle finally. The brandy wine is everywhere and um, really I should have tied this up weeks ago, months ago, because um, it's getting a bit trodden on when I walk in and out but it doesn't seem to mind too much and to be honest I'm quite grateful it hasn't grown too tall. Um, Sun cherry red cherry hybrid is uh, looking a whole lot happier these days. Really looking quite good there with the number of tomatoes coming on there, it's absolutely everywhere. My sweet aperitif is quite sweet. I'm going to go and get a different camera. In the corner here, the sweet aperitif is everywhere and putting out lots and lots of tomatoes. I'm very happy with that. This brandy wine here has got a whole lot of fruit low down, some of which is ripening. So, really quite pleased with that one. My son's butter bean is not looking so happy this week and um, all I can think is this is where I sprayed it with the mixture of neem oil and detergent. All the leaves that got sprayed have gone um, kind of crunchy but the leaves that didn't, the new growth, still looks fine and I wonder if this is because I mixed with the wrong kind of detergent when I uh, dosed this plant but none of the others seem to be suffering the same way so really not sure what's afflicting that. And over in the corner, my golden berry is finally putting out new growth that isn't getting destroyed by spider mites straight away. So hopefully that's on the mend after many months of sitting there doing nothing. Let's check out greenhouse number one. And here we are in greenhouse number two, starting off with the massive brandywine in the corner there. Absolutely humongous. Um, a few fruit on it, it's coming along, it'll take a while, a couple there, some around here, one up there that's starting to get ripe, so generally looking alright, certainly um, impressive amount of growth on it. The peppers, not looking too bad, still growing rapidly, but uh, a bit of damage on some of the leaves, I don't know if this was the spider mites, I can see that this one I've... Uh, Still got a few little flakes of bran on, so obviously that's one I treated with the predators at some point. But growing quite nicely. Um, this one's got a fair number of flowers on the top of it. My seedlings have some issues because I went away on holiday and they haven't been watered for a week, so those are all totally dried out. The ones that had sprouted I put into this bed before I went away. The thyme has pretty much all dried up and isn't looking too good. That was a salad bowl lettuce, killed that one. But my Kelvedon Wonder Pea is doing alright and my cauliflowers are doing okay. So I'll have to do something this weekend about transferring them to a better spot to grow in. Um, my sweet aperitifs in this greenhouse are doing okay. Um, this particular runner here has gone crazy. I'm sure this wasn't here two weeks ago. This is all off this plant round in the corner there and it's uh, spreading out to take over the room and it's suspended itself 
from one of the runners on a higher up tomato. So, impressive job of tying itself up there. Um, this pepper's looking rather fine. I think that's pretty much ready for a harvest now. Very good. Weird little knobbly bit there. Very strange. The strawberries. We're back in business with berries. Look at this. Got another strawberry ready to eat. And uh, quite a few more coming on all over the place. And lots of new growth. Looking much happier on the strawberries again. Really not too bad at all now that the spider mites aren't uh, eating all the food eating all the nutrients. We're coming along okay, that one needs a bit of love and attention. I'll sort that one out today. But uh, as a general rule, I'm doing okay. Ah, yes. Now this tomato cutting that I planted two weeks ago, three weeks ago now, is growing, is fruiting. Got a couple of fruit there, a couple of fruit there. So generally, really quite happy with that, considering the size of the plant. For it to be putting out tomatoes, I'm really quite pleased. So I'm going to repeat that experiment and uh, get a few more runners and just plonk them in a pot today, see how they get on. So I made myself a little dusting bottle for doing diatomaceous earth, which is just a plastic bottle with holes drilled in. And um, I've been doing this raw bean, butter bean plant here and uh, I think I've worked out what it, what's ailing it. It's uh, got a load of spider mites on there, well, it's certainly got a load of spider webs on there and I haven't spotted any spider mites on there but that would certainly explain what's been doing this poor planting. So um, we'll see what diatomaceous earth does on that. Well folks, hope you enjoyed that little experiment and uh, thank you very much for joining me in my greenhouse today. Um, tomorrow's going to be one year to the day that I put my first video up on YouTube so thank you very much to all the people that have joined me for my fun weekends. Um, anyway, cheers folks, see you next time, bye!